Um, we are interested in um, your process for collaboratively devising the music for these productions. And can you tell us a little bit about that? My process for collaboratively designing the music yeah. for Propellus Productions. Well, first of all, we'll discuss what the touchstones are going to be. Mm. So, with Rich the Third, choral music, mm. Latin plain song, English magical, it's very English material, yeah. infused with a little bit of heavy metal, <laughs> a rock. So we thought we'd mix a Sanctus with a little bit of, give it some contemporary edge, um, just to spin it a little. And we decide where these moments might happen. And as we work through the taxi actors would then put together bits of music and I will edit them with them. And some will put them into the play. Some will work, some won't. Um, but we'll collect different pieces of music. And so while we're working the play, we'll collect the music and we'll have it all written up on a wall, what we've got. So we'll say, oh, we'll use a bit of that here. So we'll work this music separately to begin with. Once we've got the material, we can then start applying it in different places, just like a cut and paste job. Mm. Um, with Comedy of Errors, we decided it was 1980s was the touchstone. It was going to be a sort of um, cheap package holiday islands with uh, <laughs> Costa del Ephesus, we call it. Drinking too much beer, staying up too late and getting into horrible trouble. Um, wearing uh, inappropriate sombreros and other bad holiday purchases, which particularly characterised the British abroad. So we thought we'd take 80s music and spin it in sort of cheesy mariachi style. Nice. So you get pop music that you recognise, but spun in a slightly cheesy way. <laughs> um, and, and that was just, that was the brief. And then we, we started to collect music and, um, and, and again, a, a, apply it to the, um, to the show. And then there's another thing we do, which is we, we look for little signature tunes for characters. Mm. So a little musical identity for different people. Um, which you can then develop and evolve through the evening and relate to. Um, and once we've decided what that signature tune might be, we start to, you know, we'll introduce the character with it, and then we might reprise it later on, and then we might spin it and change it into something else. And mm. it becomes subliminally something that you recognise when you, you, you hear it, you associate it with the, the character. Uh, in Comedy of Errors, Adriana comes on with a very kind of forceful Latin kind of... Um, musical sting which we then use through the scene when she's berating her husband mm -hmm. for staying out and having affairs which is in fact the wrong man it's, it's, it's the wrong twin she's talking to um, and that, that that just was great fun to <laughs> play with certainly um, specifically I think she was interested in that piece that opens um, Richard III and kind of where that I mean you know you said choral music Latin, um, Latin plain song but how, how did that how do you decide where that piece, so did that just come up and this is going to be the top, this is going to be the opening, or is Absolutely. that... Absolutely, no, it came up with a, we wanted a piece that was very beautiful, mm. that would introduce the character to us, that would be quite tragic, um, beautiful and tragic, and we would use to open the play, and we had an idea that, you know, I said, the orderly should deliver Richard to the stage at mm. the beginning, and... Um, Hence the screen coming across the stage, revealing the character. But the singing should bring the character to the stage, mm. and the singing should begin the evening. And that particular piece of music, we hit on quite early on. I heard them sing it, and I, and I said, it's so beautiful. It's such a beautiful way to begin. We'll start with that and see where it takes us. Mm. Um, and it was like the first domino going down, if you mm -hmm. like. And then the others, it was very, very hard work, but they followed. Right. Um, and when we got to the end of the play... We were thinking, how are we going to finish this? How are we going to do the battle between Richmond and Richard? And how, we, how is he going to die the hero's death? Because the curious thing about the play is that he dies a hero. He finds himself in the last right. 20 minutes. And um, <laughs> it's a famous line, of a horse, horse, kingdom from my horse. And we thought, we'll bring us back to that piece of music again, which we'll recognise at the beginning of the play, take us back to the end, and give us a sort of wonderful, tragic pathos about the moment, which is very interesting when actually you're dealing with the death of a mass murderer, who theoretically you should be really pleased to see go. Um, <laughs> but it produces a kind of interesting concoction of, sadness, of yeah. tragedy and yeah. sadness, which yeah. is wholly inappropriate <laughs> for what you should be feeling about him, but absolutely in the spirit of what Shakespeare was writing in the play. 
and the musical signature tune for that conveyed that for me in a way that words couldn't um, and exists on an emotional level that, that I think the audience could feel rather than explain. Yep, perfect.